We do the CPIA as a way of allocating the scarce aid resources that the World Bank has across countries. Um, and we publish it every year on the, on the internet. But we thought that the information contained in the CPIA could be a useful for the citizens of these countries, uh, particularly as a way of monitoring and benchmarking the country's performance on policies and institutions against other countries as well as over time. And also perhaps as a tool of accountability that citizens could use the, the information in the CPIA to hold their governments accountable for their promises. So when you say the policy environment for poverty reduction across the continent has improved, what does this mean exactly? How do we measure that? Well, of the, uh, of, there are about 13 African countries whose CPIA score improved from last year uh, yes. to this year, uh, and about uh, 20 of them stayed the same. And this is impressive given that the global economy was, in, was quite turbulent during that period. What it means is that while there was all these convulsions in the global economy, African policymakers continued to pursue prudent economic policies. And that's beginning to pay off in terms of growth and poverty reduction. So overall, there were more gainers than losers in that list. That's right. Only five countries actually declined in their CPIA score. Explain this to us using an example of Kenya, which has a, a CPIA score of 3.8. What does that mean yeah. exactly? Well, that, that 3.8 is Kenya's aggregate score. Yes. Um, it is about third or fourth highest in, in Africa. The highest score is 4.0 for Cape Verde. Um, and what that is is, is a combination of about f broadly four categories. Kenya is one of the top scorers on macroeconomic management. I think it's 4.8 or something for, for that particular category. And then it's been making quite a lot of progress on policies for social inclusion. Uh, but uh, the, the, the slowest or the, the lowest performance in, for Kenya is in governance, and particularly in the areas of property rights, transparency, and accountability. All right. We see a lot of resource-rich resource countries, as it were, not doing as well as a lot might expect, considering the abandoned resources they have. Right. That's the other uh, troubling uh, statistic, is yes. that the resource-rich countries have CPIA scores that are lower than the resource poor countries in Africa. Mm -hmm. And what this means is could be that when you have a lot of resources, there's less of, a, of an incentive to pursue prudent economic policies. And also what we find is that because the nature of resources, particularly oil, is that the money goes directly from the oil company to the government, not passing through the citizens, yes. which means citizens, first of all, know less about how much money there is and maybe have less of an incentive to scrutinize it. And a big part of the CPIA is how well governments are spending their resources. And we find that across the board, the resource-rich countries spend their resources more poorly. Let's tie that to economic management. In these times of a global economic slowdown, many people might think that governments do not want to be committed to economic reforms and just trying to make, do it right around that area. Is that the case? No, on the contrary. I think African policymakers, as they showed during the 2008-09 crisis, continued with prudent economic policies while the, the rest of the world was falling apart yes. on them. And this paid off because, as we can see, the African continent, while it suffered from the 2008-09 crisis, growth fell to about 2%. In one year, it turned around. And that meant that following these policies and staying on track actually enabled Africa to benefit from the global turnaround. What are uh, the trends you see around social inclusion and equity? The, the social inclusion and equity is, is not the highest performing score in Africa, but yes. we've seen improvements, including in this country. Yes. We're seeing go governments in increasingly developing social safety nets and social protection programs, like the Orphans and Vulnerable Children program here yes. in Kenya, which are also important during global recessions, because this is a way of getting targeted resources to poor people to cushion them from the worst of a, of a global recession. But governance still lags, like we were talking about Kenya earlier. Governance is still a problem all across the continent. Yes, the governance scores are the lowest of the four categories uh, across the continent, uh, and, and as they are in Kenya, although Kenya is, I think, slightly above the African uh, average. And this is, you know, governance, ref governance reforms are probably the most politically charged reforms, yes, and sure. so they're harder to do. But uh, I think the good news is that countries have been making progress, including Kenya, with the Open Data Initiative. And we are hopeful that the implementation of the new constitution will bring uh, some more governance reforms in the country. The progress you talk about, do you feel it is sufficient for African countries to lift the majority of the populations out of poverty? No, it's by no means sufficient. We still have 
let 48% of the, of the African population living on $1.25 a day, and we need to bring that number down uh, radically. Uh, however, in recent times, thanks to the progress on policies and institutions, which have translated into rapid economic growth, sure. we're seeing the poverty rate declining. In fact, it's falling by about one percentage point or better a year. And for the first time, between 2005 and 2008, the absolute number of poor people has fallen. That means that poverty is falling faster than population is growing. Right. And about nine million people escape poverty in that three-year period. Are there any some specific recommendations you're giving in this review? Well, I think the recommendations are very country-specific. Yes. But if you want to take the case of Kenya, yes. uh, one of our recommendations would be that they should focus on the on the governance areas because that's where you get the that's the the, the weakest suit, if you like, mm -hmm. and where you can make a lot of progress. But importantly, progress on governance benefits not only benefits the CPIA score but benefits the entire Kenyan population.